So as promised, I'm just about to start this time-lapse video of the gyroscope with the case removed so that you can see the internal mechanism returning to level each time I cause a deliberate misalignment. And that's by virtue of the pendulous vanes and the airports which are making the corrections. I've got a stopwatch running so you can see how long each correction will take. A small LED light just to illuminate the scene. A bubble level to show the direction of level. And the time lapse is being taken with this Nikon camera in time lapse movie mode, which will be recording one frame every two seconds for one and a half hours, and that will produce a one minute 30 second time lapse video. So, in the time lapse, you'll see me deliberately introducing errors, and I will even place the case of the unit upside down just to show you that the orientation of the instrument's case is completely irrelevant because the internal mechanism is always aligning to true level. And what I'd like you to take particular note of is that upon completion of each correction back to level, this pendulous vein will be half blocking the airport. You can see it's wide open right now, but at the end of each exercise, it will be half blocking the port, which indicates it has aligned back to true level. And just one additional point I wanted to mention that I didn't mention yesterday was these brass threads, okay? They are basically just to balance the instrument. You can see that they have Loctite on them, so they won't move. You'll see there's an alignment one there. There's another one running fore and aft, again, with Loctite. And they are simply used to make sure the instrument is just nicely balanced. So I'm just about to start the gyro. I'll start the time lapse on the Nikon camera first. So that's now recording one frame every two seconds. We'll now power up the gyro. And after it has a minute or two to self-align, I will deliberately place it upside down, inducing a 180 degree error. And you can watch in the time lapse how long the correction takes. So we'll start the stopwatch as well. Okay, that's quite nicely level, so I'll cage the unit and turn it upside down and then release the cage. As you can see, the unit is upside down. And we'll just watch the time lapse video now, how long it takes to correct. And you can see if we look down from above, the gyro is upside down. Those are the pendulous veins at the top. So they're now taking action to self-correct the gyro back to level. And as you can see, the case of the unit is upside down, but that is irrelevant because it is the internal mechanism that will align back to level.
the time lapse has just finished so I'll just maneuver the gyro a little bit so you can see how the internal part remains level no matter what I do to the external case the internal gyro is remaining level and obviously that translates to an attitude indication on the display pitching down, pitching up, rolling left, rolling right the gyro inside always stays level you see as I move it around a bit those pendulous vanes are swinging but they're always going to serve to keep this gyro level So I've just completed a time-lapse video of this artificial horizon with the case removed and you can see the internal mechanism working as it self-corrects alignment errors back to level. But I just want to take this opportunity to correct some of the misconceptions that I'm reading in the comments from the Flat Earthers on the previous videos. Please don't read too much into the experiment. It's proving only the following points. Okay, The artificial horizon experiments prove that the artificial horizon has self-correcting mechanisms. It proves the instrument will always correct to level. The correction rate is faster than one degree in eight minutes. Now that is significant because if we are flying across the earth at 450 knots, which is a typical airliner speed, we are moving across one degree of curvature every eight minutes. Now we've demonstrated that this gyro is capable of correcting much faster than that. So the demonstration shows that the gyro is perfectly capable of maintaining a level attitude, a level indication, even if the aircraft is flying across curvature. The correction rate in the gyro is faster, much faster, than what would be required to achieve one degree in eight minutes. So just to clarify again, this video is not proving curvature. I'm not claiming that it proves curvature. I'm showing you proof that the instrument is capable of remaining level flying across curvature. Now that demonstration debunks the flat earth claims that an artificial horizon, spelled wrong, artificial horizon is evidence of a flat earth okay so it debunks the flat earth claims that an artificial horizon is evidence of a flat earth because they are claiming and I, I agree it's not everyone that's claiming this but there are certainly some flat earth channels claiming that the artificial horizon remaining level in an aircraft is evidence of a flat earth but it's not at all because we have demonstrated many times in my videos that this instrument has self-correcting mechanisms and it is more than capable of correcting itself for the curvature of the earth. So additionally, some extra points to consider. The errors you see in these videos will not occur in a normal flight. The gyro is aligned before takeoff. It remains aligned throughout the entire flight. There is never a situation in flight where it has to correct these gross errors. Even if we were flying a session of aerobatics and the gyro toppled completely, upon completion of the aerobatics, we would pull the caging knob and correct the gyro back to level quickly. There's never a time where we are relying on the instrument in flight for many minutes while it is correcting a gross error. Okay, that's very important. I see that comment quite often it's just a misunderstanding of what this video is showing you. Now, the other point is the aircraft will not crash. I can't even tell you how many times I've read that comment on the uh, gyro videos by Flat Earthers claiming that the aircraft would crash in the time it takes to self-correct. Again, 
the errors are not present in a normal flight. The aircraft won't crash because we're not wholly and solely relying on this one instrument. We are constantly cross-referencing other instruments and we can fly perfectly safely even without an artificial horizon. And the thing to remember is that in normal flying conditions, the internal part of this gyro is aligning to true level. Okay. Now, if we put the aircraft into a climb, the body of the instrument will be angled like that. Okay. The aircraft is in a climb with the nose attitude upwards. But remember, the internal mechanism is still remaining level and it's still correcting to level. It will always correct to level regardless of the attitude of the case of the instrument. So in an extended climb, the gyro is not going to realign with the climb. It's realigning constantly with true level. So it will show you a correct climb indication throughout the climb.